This type of law was given by two scientists from Norway. Their names were Goldberg and Wage. That's why this law is also known as Goldberg and Wage's law. Those who are going to study this chemical equilibrium for the first time will obviously think that what was the necessity of giving this law? We have read chemical equilibrium. We have seen that at equilibrium, the concentrations of reactant and products become constant. They don't change with the change of time. So suppose we are carrying out a reversible reaction and we find that at equilibrium state only 10% of the reactants have undergone change into the products. And now we want that this 10% should be changed to 20% or 30% or 50%. Of course, it is impossible for us to convert that into 100% because the reaction is reversible. Then how to change, how to increase the quantum of products? The otherwise also, if we want to decrease the quantum of products, that also we can do. But how to do this in this direction? Researchers were made by Goldberg and Wage and they came to this conclusion in the form of a law that is known as law of mass action and its statement is the rate at which a substance reacts is proportional to its active mass and rate of overall reaction is proportional to the product of active masses of the reactants. I repeat, the rate at which a substance reacts is proportional to its active mass I have underlined active mass because I have to deal with this in detail here. I would like to have a little discussion of rate of reaction also. So, the rate at which a substance reacts is proportional to its active mass and the rate of overall reaction is proportional to the product of active masses of the reactants. So, before we go into the mathematical derivation of the law, let us elaborate upon the two points. The first one is rate of reaction. What do we mean by this? Although, we would study in detail this part, rate of reaction, in the chapter of chemical kinetics. But for the time being, one should know rate of reaction is defined as the rate at which concentration of a substance changes with time therefore its unit is concentration time inverse since concentration is expressed in terms of mole per liter so we would try to write mole liter inverse time inverse the time can be measured in terms of seconds, minutes or anything convenient. A very important term for us here is active mass. Let us see what do we mean by active mass. Active mass for any substance, any chemical is defined as its molar concentration. That is concentration in terms of moles per liter. And remember, active mass for any substance is represented by putting its chemical formula within square brackets. I'll take an example here. Suppose we have 2.8 grams of HI gas enclosed in a vessel whose volume is 2 liter. It is given to us that atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and that of iodine is 127. Our job is to find out active mass of HI. That is to be represented by putting the formula within the square bracket. So active mass is nothing but molar concentration, that is number of moles per liter. Obviously the formula becomes grams of the substance upon its molecular weight 
into its volume, that volume is to be measured in terms of liter because grams of substance upon molecular weight, this thing is known as number of moles. So, using the data given over here, we will say that we are having 2.8 grams of HI, its molecular weight is 1 plus 127 becomes 128 into 2. So much moles per liter, that becomes its active mass. It can be worked out, whatever amount is there, it becomes its active mass. Let me pose a simple question before you.